Welcome to my channel of maths videos. My name is Karen Daly and I am a maths lecturer at DKIT, a third level college in Ireland. This video will show you how to add and subtract fractions. Enjoy! Let's look first at adding and subtracting fractions. If we were asked to add one-fifth to two-fifths, the answer to this question can be clearly displayed using my circle divided into fifths. If I have one-fifth, let me shade it in, that's one-fifth, and I add it to two-fifths, so two of these, and let me shade two more in, what I end up with is one, two, three-fifths. So let me write that in. So the answer to this problem is three divided by five. The three here um, was clearly got by adding one plus two. So one plus two gave you the 3. This can only be done if these two numbers underneath the line of the division are the same. The number underneath the line of division is called the denominator, whilst the number above the line of division is called the numerator. So to recap on what we have done, and I will put it in a box because it's very important, it says to add or subtract fractions, we have to have a common denominator, which in the example above was the number 5. 5 was the common denominator between these two fractions. So let's try a simple subtraction problem. 3 over 5 subtract 1 over 5. Now remember to do this we have to have a common denominator and in this case we do. The common denominator is 5. So when we get the answer, the answer will also be a fifth. Now to get the top um, value, all we have to do is we take the 3 and we subtract 1 from it. So 3 subtract 1 will give you the answer of the numerator. 3 minus 1 is 2, so the answer is 2 fifths. Let's try another example. Here I'm asked to add a third to a quarter. If I look at the denominators here, the denominator here is 3 and here is 4, so they don't share a common denominator. This means that I cannot add these two fractions directly. Um, what I have to do is find a common denominator, rewrite them, and then add them. So what is the common denominator? Well, the common denominator will always be just these two values multiplied by each other. So it's going to be 3 multiplied by 4. So in this case, it's going to be 12. So going back here to the top line, uh, a third, I'm going to rewrite it as something divided by 12, and I'm going to add it to a quarter, which is going to re be rewritten as something divided by 12 also, and then I'll be in a position to add the two fractions and get again something divided by 12. Let's look first at rewriting a third um, in terms of a twelfth. Well, 3 um, is changed into a 12 and I did that by multiplying it by 4. 3 multiplied by 4 is 12. Now if I multiply the bottom of the line by 4 I have to do exactly the same on the top of the line because they have to be equal to each other. So if I multiply the top of my line here by 4, 4 ones are 4, what I'll get is 4 divided by 12. So let me put in a 4 here. Now let me rewrite um, the quarter and I want to convert that into something over 12. Okay, so doing the same with the quarter, um, going from 4 to 12, I had to multiply 4 by 3. So I have to do exactly the same on the top. Multiplying 1 by 3, I will get 3. So I'll put this in here, 3, 3. Now here I have a common denominator, it's 12. And 4 over 12 plus 3 over 12, add the two numbers on top, and I will get 7 divided by 12. Let's try another example. Here you have 2 fifths, and you're adding it to 3 quarters. Again, there's a problem that they don't share a common denominator. So to start, we have to find this common denominator. Just like before, the common denominator is got by multiplying the two denominators. So what I get is the common denominator is 5 multiplied by 4, so in this case it's 20. So I'm going to rewrite 2 over 5 as something over 20, and I'm going to add it to 3 over 4, 
which I'll rewrite as something over 20, and the answer will become something divided by 20 as well. So let's look at 2 over 5. Well, to go from 5 to 20, I multiplied it by 4. So the 2 has to be multiplied by 4 also. So 4 2's are 8. So this value here is 8 over 20. Doing the same with the, two, with the 3 quarters. Uh, from, to go from 4 to 20, I multiplied it by 5. So I have to multiply by 5 on the top of the line also. And 5 3's are 15. So let me put that in. That's 15. So here, this is 15. Um, so this turns out to be 15 plus 8, which is 23 divided by 20. So the answer is 23 divided by 20. Now I can rewrite this in a slightly different form. Remember, 20 over 20 is 1, so I could write it as 1. And then you're left with 3 twentieths and 3 twentieths. Let me do one more example. Here I have 5 over 6, and I want to subtract this time 4 over 9 from it. Just like before, the 6 and the 9 are not the same, so we don't have a common denominator. So our first task is to find a common denominator. As I said before, the common denominator, we're going to find it by multiplying these two numbers together. So we multiply 6 by 9, and we're going to get 54. You may notice that it's not maybe what we call the lowest common denominator, but it doesn't have to be. So 54 is our common denominator, so we're going to rewrite 5 over 6 as something divided by 54, and we're going to subtract it and rewrite 4 over 9 as something divided by 54. And the answer is going to be something divided by 54 also. Like before, um, to go from 6 to 54, we multiplied 6 by 9. So to go from 5 to this number here, we have to multiply it by 9, and 9 fives are 45. So let me put that in. That's 45. The same for 4 over 9, to go from 9 to 54, we multiplied it by 6. And so likewise, we're going to have to multiply 4 by 6, and 6 4s are 24. So if I put that in, I'll find that this value here is 24. Now if I have 45 and I subtract 24 from it, I get 21. 21 divided by 54 is the answer, but I can reduce this fra fra fraction um, to, into a, a simpler form because I see that 3 divides in here and 3 divides in here. So if I do that, dividing 3 in here, I will get 7. Dividing 3 into here, 3 into 5 goes 1. 3 into 24 goes 8 times. So reducing it, that's the same as 7 divided by 18.